Aries, what's going on in love for Aries at this time? Aries, let's see here. I'm going to take five cards, okay? Judgment, so you've released something in the recent past, so let's, we'll look into that. Judgment is Scorpio energy. You're now holding back. You're being very self-protective in a love relationship. So something has uh, is bothering you. We get the death card also. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to the table view. And there we go. Okay. So you can see the card. So let's see. So we have the death card, the judgment card. Scorpio energy is very strong. You might have released somebody with the Scorpio new moon or full moon. The uh, emperor energy says that you want to make the right moves for love in your life. Hi, Phoenix! Hey! Hey, Heidi Ho, Phoenix! It's so good to see you here. Not really late to the game. I didn't announce it, so it's so nice to have you here, my dear. Okay, so let's see what we have. So for Aries, we have Aries energy. You have arrived in your reading, but it really looks as though you're making a decision at this time, Aries to really start listening to your inner voice and to stop listening to the noise around you. So right now it looks like you are in this energy, Aries, of really clearing up what you want, really releasing things that do not serve you. Let's go ahead and clarify these cards for you. It's very powerful energy because what you want is a Four of Wands energy. So if somebody really isn't very serious in a relationship at this time, I don't really see that you're interested. You're holding back from someone that you thought you were going to have the Ten of Cups. So for some of you, this means that you're ending a relationship, a marriage, a long-term committed marriage because it did not really uh, work out the way that you had hoped or planned. We do see a lot of love here. Five of Wands means that there's been some childish sort of arguing and bickering back and forth. We see the Ten of Wands. You're just really releasing this. You want someone who loves you very deeply, and your person does, but it looks as though there's a lot of ego-based energy, and it looks as though you're just pulling back at this time. Ace of Swords, that's, you have great clarity about what you want, and what you want is somebody who's not ego-centered, but very emotionally based in the way they're approaching love and relationship. All right. Hey, Sashi. Hi. So good to see you. Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. Mwah, 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 mwah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do Taurus. So right now, Aries, you look like you're really in a transition period uh, and you are going to build something new and lovely because with death comes rebirth. All right. Anybody else? Phoenix. <laughs> Hey, be sure to like some, you know, like and comment and just do all those nice things for me. Uh, thank you very much. So let's look at Taurus energy. All right. Taurus, look at you. You have this beautiful energy of the Six of Cups. So you're having a reunion with someone, and that energy is Scorpio energy. That's your seventh house of love. So let's see what else is going on with our Scorpio friends. So let's see. Ooh, the star card. Hope so. Dreams for love coming true. So you're feeling really loved up at this time. It feels like there's a nice flow of energy, equal give and take, a very strong spiritual core. You're both at a very elevated level. That's my Dracana. Do to do, of course, right? Spoiler alert. There seems to be some sort of conflict that's happened in the recent past or that's going on right now. It could be happening as we speak. And I'm thrilled to catch this. I'm thrilled to have you. I'm going to start doing lives a lot more regularly. I might choose uh, like Thursday morning to do my lives. So let's see. We have Seven of Cups. So there's been an argument about someone uh, that you're having a relationship with, and they don't seem as committed as you are, Taurus. So we get Seven of Cups. There's a feeling or an argument about how time is spent, you know, how you're valuing the relationship. Taurus, oh my gosh, I got this for Aries. You're going to release anybody that isn't on the same page. So again, we're going to go ahead and clarify this, but you are definitely not having anything that really doesn't meet your spiritual qualifications. I see so much upliftment <laughs> at this time. 
in terms of what we are as a collective, what we're doing. So let's look and see what the clarifiers are. This sun card. So you really love this person. They bring you a lot of happiness. Um, the high priest it says that your person is very spiritual. It does speak to that. And it is also but the king of swords. So somebody is a little bit too analytical in this relationship. The king of swords is too aloof. Somebody who's not really opening up and showing their emotions as much as you are and there the emotions are there the six of cups is about loving somebody and wanting to grow old with them the seven of cups energy why is the seven of cups energy here for our taurus friends knight of pentacles well at least we have virgo energy so this is good news because what it says to me is that your person will come around to your way of thinking and i think this is an, the slow moving knight the knight of pentacles energy which is virgo energy uh, so you might be dealing with another earth sign but it does say that your person is well intended so i like that because virgo energy is willing to do the work so even though they're being a little bit weird about what's going on and the argument that it's caused you really have told this person that they could have their walking papers and they are not going anywhere your person's on this horse moving slowly to agree with you six of wands you have a victory so by standing your ground and standing in your power you get a victory in love. That's Leo energy. So it really speaks to the fact that you stood your ground. You're staying on your spiritual path. You're not going to really suffer fools. And by doing that, you have a win in love. So like that energy for you. So right now, Aries, you look like you're really in a transition period. Uh, and you are going to build something new and lovely because with death comes rebirth. All right. Anybody else? Phoenix. <laughs> Hey, be sure to like some, you know, like and comment and just do all those nice things for me. Uh, thank you very much. So let's look at Taurus energy. All right. Taurus, look at you. You have this beautiful energy of the Six of Cups. So you're having a reunion with someone and that energy is Scorpio energy. That's your seventh house of love. So let's see what else is going on with our Scorpio friends. So let's see. Ooh, the star card. Hope so. Dreams for love coming true. So you're feeling really loved up at this time. It feels like there's a nice flow of energy, equal give and take, a very strong spiritual core. You're both at a very elevated level. That's my Dracana. Do to do, of course, right? Spoiler alert. There seems to be some sort of conflict that's happened in the recent past or that's going on right now. It could be happening as we speak. And I'm thrilled to catch this. I'm thrilled to have you. I'm going to start doing lives a lot more regularly. I might choose uh, like Thursday morning to do my lives. So let's see. We have Seven of Cups. So there's been an argument about someone uh, that you're having a relationship with. And they don't seem as committed as you are, Taurus. So we get Seven of Cups. There's a feeling or an argument about how time is spent. You know, how you're valuing the relationship. Taurus. Oh my gosh, I got this for Aries. You're going to release anybody that isn't on the same page. So again, we're going to go ahead and clarify this, but you are definitely not having anything that really doesn't meet your spiritual qualifications. I see so much upliftment <laughs> at this time in terms of what we are as a collective, what we're doing. So let's look and see what the clarifiers are. This sun card. So you really love this person. They bring you a lot of happiness. Um, the high priest says that your person is very spiritual. It does speak to that. And it is also but the king of swords. So somebody is a little bit too analytical in this relationship. The king of swords is too aloof. Somebody who's not really opening up and showing their emotions as much as you are and there the emotions are there the six of cups is about loving somebody and wanting to grow old with them the seven of cups energy why is the seven of cups energy here for our taurus friends knight of pentacles well at least we have virgo energy so this is good news because what it says to me is that your person will come around to your way of thinking and i think this is an, the slow moving knight the knight of pentacles energy which is virgo energy uh, so you might be dealing with another earth sign but it does say that your person 
is well intended. So I like that because Virgo energy is willing to do the work. So even though they're being a little bit weird about what's going on and the argument that it's caused, you really have told this person that they could have their walking papers and they are not going anywhere. Your person's on this horse moving slowly to agree with you. Six of Wands, you have a victory. So by standing your ground and standing in your power, you get a victory in love. That's Leo energy. So it really speaks to the fact that you stood your ground, you're staying on your spiritual path, you're not going to really suffer fools, and by doing that, you have a win in love. So like that energy for you. So now we are in Gemini energy, and look at what fell out, a clump of cards. So Gemini, you are wounded. I am a Gemini. I am wounded. <laughs> so um, you are going through a period of healing, Gemini. Uh, you have moved away from a situation or a relationship in which there was a lot of love. You know, there was a lot of love. You'd known each other for a while. You have this energy of the Empress card and you are attracting new love in at this time. So it's the energy of the Nine of Pentacles, which is the Empress card of the Minor Arcana. So we have... Uh, Virgo energy, we have Scorpio, we have Taurus, we have Aquarius, and we have Libra energy here. So right now, it does look like your person wants to return to you. For, for those who are Geminis, your person does want to return. But, you know, you're keeping yourself in a very beautiful, very calm, very beautiful energy that you have right now. The Taurus Venus does not have to chase anybody. The Taurus Empress is all about attracting love. And if somebody doesn't know how to make that journey to the Empress, then they are going to be down and out. Let's see. Uh -huh. Mafe, hi, Gemini in the house. Woohoo! Okay, Mafe, it looks like you're doing really well here. I like this energy. Let's go ahead and clarify the cards. The Four of Swords, why is it here for our Geminis? The Empress, oh good. So basically, Mafe, for you and me, uh, basically what we're seeing here in the cards is that you are going to stay in your Empress energy. And if somebody hurts your feelings, you might, behind closed doors, pull yourself back, you know. You're not going to let them see your wounds. You are showing a very powerful, very, you know your worth, you know your value, and you are taking care of yourself. And if you are, quote unquote, licking your wounds, you know, behind closed doors, that's your business and nobody else's. And you're not going to let your person the person that you love, you're not going to let them witness that. You're just not going to let them have that sort of power, you know, to be negative with you, if they want it to be. So we have the Six of Swords, and we it is clarified by the High Priest. So somebody is watching you very carefully. The High Priest is the energy of your person watching you take that Uber <laughs> the water taxi in Venice. They see you moving away and they haven't said anything yet, but let's see what they're going to do here because they want a reconciliation with you. The high priestess. Oh, you guys aren't talking. <laughs> Mafia, are you talking to your person right now? Hi, Allie Capricorn planning anything special for me. Okay, so we'll get there. Hi, Julia. I don't usually see these do the time difference. That's why I'm trying to do it in the morning because I thought, you know, the time difference is going to be good everywhere. So right now, Gemini, to get back to Gemini, is that you're, you and your person are in a, you're taking a little break from each other. Now you're still very connected. The high priest and the high priestess means that there is a certain element of divinity in your relationship. The chariot card... <laughs> <laughs> the chariot card is clarifying our empress. Somebody's coming in with great uh, fervor, with great energy. The chariot card is a card of speed. Uh, your person's coming in to talk to you very, very soon. So we are seeing here, let's see what we have. We have the nine of pentacles. You are looking single and ready to mingle, and your person does not want that at all, Gemini. So let's see what they have to say. What's going to happen here with this Nine of Swords? Well, 
The Page of Swords has been watching you. <laughs> so this high priest over here is watching you. They're watching any of your social media accounts. The Queen of Cups, they love you. They're coming in to offer a cup of love. So very interesting energy how that you are staying in your power and it allows the other person to come to you and it really requires them to do that if they want to maintain the connection. Good, right? Nothing is free in life. We all invest and if everybody is invested, things go well. And when no, when one person's invested and the other one isn't, it doesn't work out so well. So, so now we're on to Cancerian energy and I'm having so much fun. I'm so delighted. All right, so this is really much more like doing personal readings, which is where I came from. <laughs> the heart and grit of what I love to do is really personal readings, so it's so much fun to have all of you here having this interaction. Okay, so Cancer, you're all up in your head. That's a Gemini card. That's a Gemini trick. So self-imposed restriction, Eight of Swords, you're choosing to to keep yourself in a happier place. You're staying calm. You don't want any outside interference from anyone. So let's see what else we have for cancer and love. Okay, you're being very strategic right now. And the person that you're dealing with is coming in with Aquarius energy, Gemini energy. Look at this, the Two of Cups is here. So there is love. Okay, so let's see. Everybody's being all up in their head right now. Let's see what's going on with cancer. The death card. So death and rebirth on the two of cups. Now the two of cups can be a marriage card. So for some of you, you're considering divorce or a breakup. Uh, but the two of cups is cancerian energy. So we're going to see what is going to die and what will be reborn. Because the death card is, you know, I always like to compare it to taking out a kitchen. You replace the old kitchen with a new kitchen. I don't find the death card nearly as daunting as most people because oftentimes it brings in a lot of new energy and new growth into a relationship. Okay, so what's the last card in the basic spread? Your ships are coming in. Interesting. So now the clarifiers tell the story. As you all know, I'm a big believer, believer in clarifiers. So we have the Eight of Swords energy. Why are you holding back? because that Three of Wands says that whatever you're holding out for, you're going to get it. So we have the Two of Cups, nice, okay. So you're basically telling your person, you can stay over here, you can be aloof, you can be cool, calm, and collected, but I know what I want, I know what I'm manifesting, Cancer says to the King of Swords. <laughs> I'm manifesting a life that really includes a deep, uh, lovely love affair and energy. And the Seven of Wands is you're standing in your power. You're not going to accept less. So if this person isn't on the same page, you're willing to let them go. But it looks as though they are very interested with that Two of Cups. Let's see why the King of Swords is here. The High Priest. Ooh, we got this for Gemini. Let's see what we have for the Two of Cups for your person's energy. Let's see. The Five of Cups. Oh, they do not want to be without you, Cancer. They feel as though by you reining them in and standing in your power that somehow they feel a little bit butthurt. Oh, well, you know, these are too, you know, love is too important. So, what? oh, the Ace of Cups is your outcome card. And look at that. Your ships have come in. You have a beautiful uh, new beginning in love again. And again, the death card always shows death and rebirth. So your person has had to focus on the fact that they want to be on the same page with you. And you brought that about by just not doing anything at all. You let them sort it out. One of my favorite ways to do things. <laughs> so I'm very much on board with that cancer. So I really love this energy, beautiful energy cancer. Really, everybody that I see is standing in their power. They're, you know, letting things come to them. We have a lot of empresses in the room today. So what do we have? Let's see. Okay. Make them work. That's right. Well, you know, people have to choose love. And love takes time and love takes energy. So, you know, at the, at the least we can do is to always, you know, stay in our power and respect what we really need and want. Now we are on Leo energy. Leo, Leo, I know a Leo that I'm reading for right now, so let's see what's going on with Leo. 
So Leo, in the past, you were you were really worried about something. You had some remorse and regret, or you thought you did some things that you know didn't work out in the relationship. But you know, I see a white dove there, right in the middle of all of those crows. You are standing in your power. You look amazing. You know that is Empress energy of the Minor Arcana. And look at the cards that I, I always love it when the cards peek at me. You have new love coming in, the beginning of a new relationship and or the return of somebody that you've been waiting for by the window. Uh, right now, it does look as though you have a little bit of fear. You don't know. If this is a smoky trail. You don't know what the outcome will be. You know that choices will have to be made, that you're in this sort of crossroads. But that Ace of Cups is beautiful. So you know who you are. <laughs> I really love this energy for you. It's really quite beautiful. So let's see why the Nine of Swords is here. Yeah, Two of Pentacles. You really felt like somebody was juggling you with another. They may have been, and it looks like they probably were. And you know, but you really kept your wits about you. You know, you stayed in this beautiful Nine of Pentacles energy, really feeling good about yourself. The Ten of Wands, you released the burden. You know, you just didn't... It, it, that is releasing the burden and not letting what other people are doing um, impact you, how you feel about yourself, your value. The Six of Wands, a victory in love. Look at this. Six of Wands, winner, winner, chicken dinner with a new beginning in love. I am loving this energy for you. You're looking out the window and when we look at this Two of Wands card, we're actually seeing a VW Volkswagen van with a surfboard and a globe. So there may, it, you may have someone who's in another country who is maybe making a decision currently uh, about their future with you. And let's see why that card is here at this time. Let's see. We have the shadow side. So this person has at times sort of played, a, I think, for you. Come close. Go away. You didn't really know where you stood. Different times they were a little bit, they were inconsistent with you is what I'm seeing for a period of time. But, you know, you just, you played the, the long game, as my daughter says, because you just said, you know what, this is really burdensome. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to look good, feel good. And whatever that person works out for themselves, if they're meant to be mine, they'll be mine. This person looks like they're coming back in for you. And we have... The Nine of Cups, Wish, Fulfillment, Eat, Drink, and Be Merry. This card is a fa the grandfather or the fairy godfather or the fairy godmother of the... Um so, you know, the zodiac of the uh, of the tarot cards. So the nine of cups is eat, drink, and be merry. Pisces energy. This is a Pisces moon. I don't know if you're dealing with a Pisces, but that really says no need to worry, Leo. Your person loves you. They want to be with you. There's a new beginning coming in love. All right. So let's look and see what is happening. Virgo energy and love. <laughs> Virgo, who are you spying on? <laughs> I'm a Virgo ascendant, so I don't really spy on too many people. I don't have time. <laughs> but it does show that, Virgo, you are intensely interested in somebody who is very much, for the cross watchers, if anybody is watching for Virgo, uh, we have you're seeking enlightenment, you're willing to take a risk, you're studying the situation very closely, Virgo. So we're going to see what else we have here. So Virgo, Virgo, let's see. The world card. So you may have closed out one relationship or you're, you may be starting a new cycle with a new person and you're thinking about it. It looks like for some of you, you might be online dating, but it really speaks to the fact that you have been in a very successful phase of your life. The world card is closing out one cycle, but it's a very successful cycle. The tower card. Da -dum. Surprise, surprise. The tower card to me is always, whether it's good or bad, it's always important because it means that the structure in which you have operated under needs to be changed. So you need to change things up. It's usually change you don't expect. Uh, it's also good surprises. It can be bad surprises, but it's often good. You have a new source of money coming in, but you have a new offer coming in. 
you are releasing the burdens from the past from an old relationship that I think has closed out. You're leaving it behind, you're closing the door, and now this new offer comes in very suddenly out of the blue. So now let's look into this with the clarifiers and see what we have. In fact, I'm going to use these clarifiers. All right. So Virgo, we have King of Cups energy. You actually love somebody very deeply. You're not speaking about it. You're watching this person. Actually, the world card may be this person. This person may be from a different culture, a different country. But you had a very significant relationship with somebody who was very different from you. You love them very deeply. There is a stability in this relationship that maybe has closed out due to a tower moment. So why is the tower here, Virgo? Why is the tower here? Let's see. We have seven of swords. Somebody lied. Somebody was not honest. Why is the seven of swords here? Somebody really never made the choice, okay? So it looks as though this person, you just don't know what they were up to, but they were manifesting. They are trying right now. Your person is with the Two of Wands energy, trying to manifest a return. <laughs> so Virgo, you are looking, you know, your person, this is uh, Taurus energy. We have Virgo energy. Here you are in your reading, Virgo, with Gemini. So if you're dealing with a Gemini, it looks as though you want to return to them to a sense of stability, and they want to return to you. So the surprise that's coming in is a new offer in love. So let's see what that, and here we go. The Fool card, a new beginning in love. But here's the really good news. It's really the new beginning in love is coming with a significant offer. So Virgo, whether you're giving the offer, receiving the offer, it's very significant energy. So it's really gorgeous. The Fool card is Aquarius, very enlightened. So let's see what burden is being given up. I love that Ten of Wands card. Moving on and leaving everything you don't need behind. Eight of Cups. You are leaving behind sadness. Virgo, let's see what else is here. So you're leaving behind the burdens of the past in the parameters of a relationship in which there was a fight or a battle or in which somebody was really not so kind. I do get the Three of Wands energy. It does say your ships are coming in. The Seven of Pentacles says that your person will invest. Here is the fly in the ointment. You have really good. The fly in the ointment. Let me get back to that. <laughs> the fly in the ointment is we have your person has some toxic energy. They think they have to be in control. When we look at the devil energy, this person has a puppet on the string and that's sort of like, well, I have to be in control or else something really bad will happen to me. Well, that's not really true. <laughs> Just because you're not in control. Being in control means that something bad will happen to someone, just maybe not you. So what I'm getting here is your person is coming in. They're still playing some games here. They still want to be large and in charge. However, the love is very real, okay? Their willingness to work on things is very strong. Their willingness to leave, you know, to look into the future with you is very powerful. You will plan a trip. You will plan starry nights and tiki torches. So you have some very romantic evenings coming up. The High Priestess says, Virgo, that you're going to stay in this energy of keeping your intuition and really keeping to yourself and not saying much. You're going to just watch this person a lot and see what they do. I think that there's a lot of love, a lot of toxicity out there in the world. This person may have issues from the past, which is likely the case, but it does not diminish the love they feel and the desire for them to invest. So it looks as though you will be happy for this return to this relationship. And, you know, you're going to stand in your power. You have been, and that's what has brought this person back to you. All right, so Libra energy. What do we have? Libra. Oh, my goodness. You are really upset with somebody. Somebody has really caused problems. That Five of Swords energy is some of my least favorite energy in the deck. And you're feeling like somebody is giving you a headache. The Tower card, you didn't see it coming. All right. So the Tower card is good, though, because whatever is unstable will be stabilized because you are not having any instability. You have that Libra energy. You want everything even. 
All right. You're dealing with maybe a Scorpio king. Somebody who isn't really sharing their emotions with you. Somebody who's not really speaking their emotions. But they love you very, very deeply. Because that's the other person. Let's see what else is we need to know. Standing in your power. That is the theme of the day. Standing in their power. Women, men, people in love who are really spiritually aware standing in their power. What is the outcome at this time? Your person's running back in. It looks as though, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and clarify this. I think I know the answer, but I like the cards to prove me right. So, so Libra, you have somebody rushing back in. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> right now, I think the door is closed. Let's take a look and see. But I like the Cancerian chariot. You know, you always want someone to be anxious to rush in to see you, right? So let's see what this energy is for our Libra friends. Hanged man. Well, you're going to remain, just you're going to wait and let this person try to explain themselves. You're going to try to look at things from their perspective to gain enlightenment about this argument that went very sideways. <laughs> you were willing to call it quits and it sounds like you basically said, well, if that's the way you feel, you know, I'm out of here. King of Cups. I can't make this up. The King of Cups is clarifying the uh, the Tower card. So clearly the King of Cups <laughs> brought down a tower. So tell us something about this King of Cups, please. Scorpio energy. The Tower card is uh, Aries energy. So Scorpio is ruled by Mars, so is Aries. So this person might have gotten feisty with you. Oh, they have remorse and regret. Your person is coming back in with a big cup of love, probably a bouquet of flowers. You are about to get a very beautiful apology. You absolutely know you deserve that apology. Your person knows you deserve that apology, Libra. Five of Wands, they live in their ego. You may be dealing with somebody who has some very uh, ego, some big ego issues, what I'm seeing here. This is childish. So let's see why they're so childish, because Five of Wands is not serious conflict. It's more like the grudge match that you have every year with your tennis friends, or, you know, if you, if you have an American Thanksgiving, it's the tag football afterwards where everybody's laughing and having fun, but this started a fire. So let's see what we have. Let's see. Five of Swords. Okay, so your person's coming in to apologize that they really overdid it, that whatever was annoying them, they might have been teasing. What else? What is what else is their excuse? Ten of Cups. They love you. You know, they didn't want to hurt you. Let's see what they learned. They learned to use a much more light approach with you. When they speak, the Ten of Swords says that they're going to apologize and never do it again. I like that. That's powerful energy. You know, they don't want to lose you, and they know that if they verbally spar with you or start drama, you're not having a Libra. Libra does not like drama, as we know. And Justice card, Libra, here you are in your reading. You find balance again. You are glad to welcome this person back into your life if they're balanced, but you're not having it if there's a lot of nonsense and drama. So that is your reading, Libra. What is going on for Scorpio in love? Scorpio in love. Let's see here, Scorpio. You just had the full moon. If you have a Scorpio or you're a cross watcher, you know, it'll be interesting to see what you might have to reveal about the full moon. Page of Cups says that you think somebody is behaving in a very childish way. You feel as though when pigs fly, and the reason I say that is there's a pig and with wings. So it means that you're very skeptical about a love interest at this time, Scorpio. You don't really think that they have their feet on the ground. This is somebody that you've known through friends or you might have met recently. It can also be somebody from the past. And it does look as though this person would like to talk to you, reconcile with you. And, you know, you're just kind of skeptical, Scorpio. Skeptical. Oh, look at this. Now we have Taurus energy twice. So you might be dealing with a seventh house Taurus person. Your seventh house of marriage is Taurus. So now we have somebody, there's one of the issues that I see in the relationship is that one of you has some sort of probably religious beliefs 
or spiritual or philosophical beliefs that are causing somewhat of a the feeling that you think someone's a lightweight, like they're not mature enough. So let's see what else we have. Oh, here we go. Taurus and Virgo. I mean, excuse me. Taurus and Scorpio, you are in love. You are falling in love. That is a new love relationship coming to fruition. And it has a potential to go the distance, even though you feel like wind pigs fly. <laughs> You're very skeptical. You're willing to invest, and you're willing to close out a cycle of being single. You know, you really don't want to be single anymore, Scorpio. So now we're going to go ahead and clarify. So let's see for Scorpio in love what we have. Why do you think this person is so flaky, Scorpio? Why do you think that they're a lightweight? There could be an age difference, definitely a cultural difference. There definitely could be a difference in uh, the countries of birth or philosophical differences that are pretty strong. Let's see. The Ace of Wands. You're turned on by them. This person has it for you. They are very attracted to you, Scorpio, lightweight or not. But let's see what you're going to, how you're going to really handle this. You're going to be very strategic with this person. We have the Emperor with the chess piece. So it says that you're going to play cool, calm, and collected. You're not going to really make a fuss about anything. You're just going to see what they have. You're going to see what they're made of. You're just going to sit back, relax, and see where they go with the relationship. Six of Cups. This is a reunion. You're going to see this person in the very near future. Now, if you have mutual friends, you are very likely to see this person at a wedding. A summer wedding or a May wedding. Uh, it could be a June wedding with the six. So you're going to see this person again. And this person is going out of their way to see you. Oops, the daisy. We have Libra energy. Hold on one second. Okay. So we have Libra energy here. So that is marriage energy. That's seventh house energy with the ace of cups. So I do feel as though you might be witnessing a marriage or you may meet this person. If this is if you are looking for new love, you can meet somebody at a wet at a friend's wedding. What I'm seeing is that there is new love. Hearts are going pitter-patter. You're both trying to stay very calm, very aloof. <laughs> the King of Swords energy. Do, 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 do. Oh, do I love you? Am I falling in love? I don't know. I can't imagine that. Let's see why. You're both interested in um, investing in this relationship. Let's see what we have here. The Sun card. Look at that. Happiest card. Happiest card in the deck. So we have the Sun there. Uh, both of you have been lonely for a bit of time also. I just saw that Five of Pentacles peek out, so you may have gone through a period of not talking with each other. Here we go. Wheel of Fortune Destiny is turning in your favor. And look at that. Okay, so why do we have the World card? Ah, the Ten of Cups, happily ever after. So it does speak to a very strong uh, likelihood of a summer romance. So make sure, Scorpio, if you are looking for love, make sure that you go to all the weddings you're invited to this year. <laughs> so there we go. So Scorpio, we're finished here. All right, so now we're going to look at Sagittarius in the house. Sag, Sag, where are you at today? Sag in love. Sagittarius energy, ruled by Jupiter, ruler of the ninth house of philosophy, higher education, uh, foreign travel, foreign culture, uh, religious beliefs, actually. Ah, Ten of Wands. Now, doesn't this person look like they're moving across the desert? I mean, it looks as though this person is moving a long distance. So, Sagittarius, you've been in this energy. This is your energy, actually. It says that you're really burdened by something that's happening in love for you and that you've left it behind. You've given up the burdens and you've released someone or something. Um, and it, here we go. We have the lover's card. Somebody that's very meaningful to you. Somebody who's probably a soulmate. You've made the decision to let this person go. You don't want the burdens anymore. You feel that they were a player. That's Sagittarius energy also. Uh, your person could have thought you were a player, but I don't think it's going to be like that. I think that it's you feeling as though someone else isn't ready to settle down. 
your energy is slowly moving forward into the future. You're really willing to um, just take it a day at a time and see what happens. Again, this shows a great deal of release. We have judgment. So the energy here that I'm seeing is very much of a relationship most likely having ended or one that will end. Because when we have this combination of cards, I'm really getting an ending. I think this is a solid ending. And I don't see a resurrection right now. Um, do I think that your player energy person will come back around? Yes, I do. The reason I think that is that we have the Knight of Pentacles. So let me go ahead and clarify the cards and see what's going on. Sag, this is kind of heavy energy for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that your heart is hurting. Let's see what we have. Ten of Wands. Why is Sag having to move away from a burden with a lover? What is the energy here? This person kept their options open. So, good for you. Not easy to walk away, but, you know, we have to preserve our own sense of self, right? At the end of the day. All right. Ten of coins. You thought you were going to marry this person. This person thought they were going to marry you, or at least probably talked about it with you, which makes it difficult. They want to rush in. They want to rush in right now. This player energy, in and out energy, wants to rush in with something to say. So let's see what they have to say to you, okay? They're, they are rushing in oh, for an apology. Remorse, regret. They have tears. That's Gemini energy. Both of those cards are Gemini energy. Make sure that they don't have a silver, what do they call that? Silver tongue, I think. Let's see. The Three of Coins is really telling us, Sag, that they want to have the relationship. They want to build the relationship. In astrology, it's very important because the Three of Coins is very much a relationship card because it's about collaboration. The Three of Coins is required. If you're going to marry somebody, if you're going to have a relationship with them, there's the two of you and then your lives as a a life together is a third entity. So I never see this as a third party situation ever. Uh, I always see this as, you know, the when as an astrologer, a professional astrologer, we do individual charts, we combine the chart for a relationship chart. So that again is the, the relationship has a chart of its own. And that's how I always read that energy. Your person wants to stabilize the relationship. They want to work on things. Virgo energy is honest effort energy. The three of coins energy is Capricorn. So it is a serious offer to work on things. The issue that you're going to have, though, is Capricorn energy is coming in as toxic. This person may have some old trauma from childhood. Let's see what else this is, because I never like the Devil card. Never like that energy. So let's see. Eight of Coins. So this person is learning, but they haven't gained any mastery. Why are they so caught in devil energy? What is it that catches them in this toxicity? Because I don't see you putting up with it. Yeah, always juggling. This person, player energy is still appearing. Now, their goal here, because you're willing to release them, we have the judgment card, you releasing them. The death card, bye bye You know, you're willing to say goodbye with that Scorpio energy because you want a rebirth that's healthy. This person is going to work on themselves. They are going to try to heal some of this energy. And we're going to look at the death card. Now, you love them unconditionally. You will love them whether you're with them or not. But you're not partaking in devil energy. Not your gig. Not my monkeys. What is that? Not my circus. Not my monkeys is what I'm seeing. The Three of Cups energy, you will put them in the friendship zone. You will keep them at arm's length. Um, I don't really, even though it's a friendship zone, um, until you have a victory, they have to not only apologize to you, they have to show you with their actions that they can manifest something different. So until they can show you anything, I don't think that you're going to engage with them. They're going to they want to be friends with you. And you're like, yeah, yeah, we'll be friends at a distance. We'll be Facebook friends, but other than that, no. So right now, Sagittarius, your love life is up, in, you know, in the air, so to speak. And we will, when we do the astrology, look-see at um, 
at the timing of when you could meet somebody. We'll see what happens there. All right, so hi, Marcia. Love this. I am back watching already. You're so cute. Now we're going into Capricorn, so we'll do this with Capricorn energy. So whoever wants to know about Capricorn, cross watcher, watcher, okay. So we have Capricorn. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Capricorn, you're feeling left in the cold. You have a really strong sense that your person has not gone, you know, gone a wall. I get that there's there's something about the two of you having a disagreement here. It does look like you feel left in the cold, but you don't seem to be really worried about it because we have the infinity symbol. You feel as though this is a stage that you're going through with your person. Justice card says that the two of you need to find balance together. Libra energy, we have Leo energy, and we have uh, Taurus energy. So a lot of fixed energy here too. So let's see what we have for your person. What are, what are they up to? Temperance, they want to see you. Well, so for some of you, what I'm seeing is, uh, for our Capricorns, is that you may actually be at a physical distance from someone and missing them because your person is coming in with this beautiful Sagittarius energy, like let's balance things, let's work things. The clarifiers will tell the story. So let's look and see what the outcome card is. Eight of Cups. Okay, so somebody's walking away. Now, I will say that the Eight of Cups energy is an energy that can mean travel and it can mean somebody leaving another space, but we'll find out. Okay, so for the Five of Pentacles, Capricorn, why are you feeling sad? Now, this card is a bit of a, a fake out because if you look up Capricorn, you'll see the key and the door. So this is sort of a almost like a self-imposed card. So there's a little bit of that. Um, it looks like you've walked away from this person. But let's see what the clarifiers are for the Five of Pentacles, the Sun card. You miss this person. That's what I'm seeing. All right. So they might be in a different location. What is the Strength card going to tell us here for our beautiful Capricorns? Let's see. Two of Swords energy. You're trying to ignore something. It looks like things. there's things that are bothering you. The circumstances are bothering you. you. You don't even want to think about it. Oh, wow. This is Pisces energy. Hmm. You feel as though something is really being hidden beneath the surface. Wow, okay. This is now probably a breakup. <laughs> so... I'm getting the judgment card. You're letting someone go. We're going to have to clarify more to find out why. But it does look like you're walking away into a more passionate existence. So let's do a, I'm going to do a little bit of a mini spread here. Why are you walking away? Because it doesn't really look as though you feel there's, It's if you were a detective, it's not as though you discovered something about this person. I'm getting that you want to maintain balance. You're walking away for another reason. You want to work on yourself. You just think the situation's hopeless. I feel as though there might be a lot of distance between the two of you, and you feel as though you want marriage, you want commitment, you want to work on that. I just feel as though your interpretation of what their actions are yeah, they are your lover. You do feel like they're your divine partner. Uh, the Four of Pentacles are you're holding back. So what I'm seeing here is that you've walked away from this person. You're just going to let it go. I feel as though you're testing the relationship. I feel as though, because I don't really see anything here that would really warrant a breakup. I don't see anything that would really warrant you walking away from them other than you don't know how they feel. They need to share how they feel with you. And it looks as though you're willing to release anybody who is not on the same page with the way you want love. And you want somebody who's really in it. You have the lover's card, you have the hierophant, um, and you're holding back in the meantime. So what I'm seeing here, and tell me, Capricorns, if there's any Capricorns over here, tell me if you're walking away to test to see how someone responds to a relationship in which... They seem to be MIA or you haven't had a lot of contact, but it, I don't really see, I'm not seeing anything that would really cause you 
specifically to walk away other than them not really moving very quickly and not really feeding the relationship and not investing in the way that you would require. So let me know there. So now we're to Aquarius. Okay. So Aquarius energy, Aquarius in the house. Do we have any Aquarius? Say hello if you are Aquarius. So let's see what we have here. We have the Nine of Wands. Okay, you have fire in your belly for someone. The Two of Wands, you need to make a decision. You want to have bigger adventures with this person. You really would like to go on a road trip with them. The Death card says that you may not have seen or heard from this person for a while and or you could be leaving an old relationship behind and you have fire in your belly for something new. Okay, so let's see what else we have. The Fool card, you, you want a new beginning. Okay, so let's see what your outcome card is, Aquarius, at this time in love. Well, you're leaving an old situation, the death card. You are walking away from the remnants of a broken relationship. You are walking into your future with this beautiful card. You know, we have the Fool card. So you're taking the leap of faith. You're walking on the beach into the sun. So that is very powerful energy. You're taking your power. You're saying, you know, I want what I want. I have fire in my belly, and I'm going to have what I want. I'm going to manifest it. So let's see what the clarifiers are for Aquarius and love at this time. We have the Nine of Wands. What happened here to make you feel? Okay, well, that answered that very quickly. You are willing to fight, but only for a new beginning with something fresh, someone new. Why else do we have the Fool card here? We have the Virgo Knight, the Knight of Pentacles. So you're also, you want somebody, you're not in a big rush to have a relationship, but you do want somebody who's in it to win it. Why is the Two of Wands here? What is crossroads that Aquarius is at? Yeah, leaving something. You, For some of you, you may be actually moving because this is a card of packing up your stuff and leaving with a lot of stuff. It is, and I think many of you who are Aquarius are thinking about relocating. And it does show that there is a sense of longing for something new, but also grieving the loss of what you would leave behind. So there is a sense of sadness here for you. Let's see, we have the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles energy says that that's Taurus. You want somebody who's very stable, very loyal. It does look like, for some of you, you may have actually lost this person. Uh, the death card is here. So for some of you who are watching this, if you're Aquarius, you have either worries about someone's health and or, you know, you may have lost a father, you know, somebody in your family. I don't usually read it as that, but the combination of cards, there's a lot of grief. And um, that's what I see. The King of Cups energy, you are moving into uh, Scorpio energy, Aquarius. You want somebody who's very stable. You don't need somebody who's effusive. You really don't. You, need, you don't need someone to tell you uh, that they love you a lot because you are an air sign. But you are really, you're moving away from more satisfaction, temperance. You want to find balance in your life. Why else do we have temperance? Wheel of Fortune. So it does look like for those of you who are looking for new love in the near future, it does look as though you will get it with that wheel probably within the next 10 weeks. So if you put yourself out there to date, I would say the time of Gemini will be a prime time for you to meet somebody new and start building a new relationship. With the temperance card, we do have that somebody who may have left may be returning. But, you know, you'll wait to see what happens. So, there we go. All right. So, let's see. Now we're on Pisces energy. Pisces, Pisces. We just had Pisces season. All right. So, Pisces. What do we have here? Let's see. Pisces. Pisces in the house. Let's see. The Six of Pentacles energy. So Pisces, you are enjoying a relationship right now in which there is equal give and take. Oh, look at how happy you are. That's your energy. Here you are, Pisces. Pisces in the house, having fun, enjoying yourself, eat, drink, be merry, enjoying the laughter. And I have a little card here stuck. So Pisces, I don't know what you're beginning and what you are starting that's so much fun, but you have something going on in your love life 
with the hidden clarifier in the deck that really speaks to your joyfulness. Oh, Pisces, are you looking at starting a marriage? Are you looking at, you know, it looks like you're saying, here, I found the one, I'm happy. Oh, nice energy, Pisces. I really keep getting a Pisces vibe that a lot of Pisces are on the verge of being engaged. The Nine of Wands says you have fire in your belly. The Seven of Swords says you're being very strategic. Now, I don't think you're being strategic about the relationship. That's, that's the card that says, to me, that really speaks to a different kind of strategy that's actually quite good. Now, I'm going to use the clarifiers and we will see if my hunch is right. Because I think that that is a good Seven of Swords and I will explain it shortly. All right, so Pisces, Pisces, you want a new beginning, you want to celebrate, you want to settle down with someone. So let's see, Six of Pentacles energy for our Pisces friends. Let's see what we have. Four of Swords, okay, so you've been missing somebody. So you may be at a distance from the person that you love because it certainly looks like you have someone with whom you have discussed marriage. Mafe, aww, thank you. You're the ray of sunshine. <laughs> I love it, that's so nice. So sweet, thank you so much, Mafe. That was beautiful, 11-11. So we have some twin flame energy in the house, nice. Mafe, thank you to everybody. I love you guys. Temperance energy. So it is a reconciliation energy. So it looks like somebody who has been away from you, you may, oh, I have goose pimples, okay. Goose pimples are my sign that I've tapped into my psychic energy, which I have a lot of, but I can't turn it on and off like a switch. It comes of its own free will, and it leaves of its own free will. But the energy that I'm getting here is very strongly that Pisces, you may be planning a surprise visit. That's what I get. That's what the Seven of Swords is. You are planning a surprise visit with somebody that you haven't seen in a while, a lover, somebody that you've been apart from, somebody that looks like they had to go work in another city. It looks as though you may be doing a long commuter relationship, but it certainly looks as though temperance is all about reconciliation, reconciling the happiness of celebration. And the Seven of Swords is sneaking around, getting airfare, not telling somebody that because you have your COVID shot, you can now travel to Europe. <laughs> so, or wherever, you know, places unknown. But this is a really, really big travel card also. You know, when I see that, it, it really is. So, I oh, here, look at this. You really miss this person and you know that they miss you because remember, your person is really, um, you know, they're, they're suffering, you're suffering. Suffering. You're both suffering. You're both suffering a lot. You can't stay. Um, you can't stay away from each other. You feel like you're losing sleep. And look at here it is. This is what I thought. I feel as though many of you are in the process. Whether you're the recipient of the proposal, but it looks to me very much with sneaking around. That's the kind of energy where oh, I'm going to buy the ring, and then you know I want to take her to dinner, or I want to take him to dinner, and I want to pop the question because. Here we have Venus, we have the Empress, which is manifestation, and a wedding, two wedding cards, a celebration card, <laughs> a new beginning card, <laughs> and there's all of this sort of, you've been apart physically, I think, for a period of time, and the joyfulness of sneaking around to make it all come together. So Pisces, I keep getting this energy in your regular readings that you're on the precipice of planning a new life with somebody in a different location, maybe, but you look like you're on the move for love. All right, so that was very sweet. You were very patient through all that. Vanessa, Vanessa, thank you so much. $9.99, I'm so appreciative. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to have all of you here. So now I'm going to scroll through. I'm going to go back and scroll through the first 10 questions and do a three-card spread for the first 10 questions, okay? So Phoenix, late to the game, Heidi Ho, Phoenix. Okay, Lori, let's see. So the first question that I'm seeing here is, let me see. Okay, Jenny Mall says, 
is Capricorn or Allie planning anything special for me, Aquarius, for Mother's Day? All right, so let's see if there is a beautiful plan for Mother's Day or anything special, anything unusual. Let's see what Allie is planning for you. Let's see here. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay. Hmm. Interesting card. He's making a decision. Judgment is all about releasing the idea of preconceived notions. But judgment is making a decision. That's the ultimate meaning of the judgment card. Ooh, he's going to be, it looks like he's planning on going out that day. You know, that's kind of like in and out energy, right? So it means in and out of the home. So it does look like, ah! look at this. The answer is yes. Ten of Cups, happily ever after. So it does look like he's planning. If you look at this, it's so cute. I'm going to hold it up to this camera. It's so cute because you see a couple here, happily ever after, and you see two children. So isn't that the perfect Mother's Day manifestation? But it looks like he wants to do something with the children that will make them feel lively. You might go to a zoo. You might, you know, might involve some things that are not as romantic as a couple, but very romantic as a couple with children and celebrating. So there you go. Yes, the answer is yes. So that is for Jenny. Okay, so I love the energy for you, Jenny. So let me scroll through here and see, Julie, I don't usually, ah, you're so cute, Hampshire, England. Okay. Uh, okay, so Mafi. Okay, so you wish him a happy birthday, so I'm going to go ahead and pull. I'm going to go ahead and pull something for you here, okay? Let's see what we have, the energy for you. Okay, Mafe, Mafe, let's see. Okay, so is your person, is that the question? Is he your person? Let's see if he's your person, your ex. We have the Hanged Man. So you're looking at it from a different perspective. So we're going to pull three cards and try to see if we can get some answers. And we'll clarify if needed. Ah, he's rushing in. He's going to continue to rush in while you think about it. I think that's wise energy. Hanged Man energy is searching for enlightenment. The Tower card means that you're going to have an epiphany, something that comes out of the blue that's going to say yay or nay. So let's go ahead and clarify these for you to see if he could be your person. The Tower card means uh, it can be a sudden surprise. It can be good or bad, but we're going to look at this energy. Yeah, he definitely wants to reconcile. Now, he wants to reconcile, but let's see if, you, if it's going to be right for you. So, oh, I have a lot of cards falling. Okay. So, <laughs> the judgment card came up again. Okay, so in the past, it looks like you walked away from him. I do get the Ace of Wands. It is a passionate beginning, if you allow it. You're thinking about this energy. What I'm seeing is a Hermit card. You're really thinking about this. I think that you should use your intuition. The Nine of Cups says that you will be happy for a period of time, that you know you will throw caution to the winds. The Eight of Pentacles says, really, that he could be your person. I'm not seeing anything compelling, yay or nay. But what I would say is that he's coming in with this energy of the Eight of Coins. The Eight of Coins is like the journeyman, apprentice, journeyman, master. So he's not where he needs to be yet, but he's willing to learn. So with the card that shows that you are in this hanged man energy, I think you just look for performance, you know? If you have the feelings for this person, you look for performance and you follow your own intuition and, you know, if you feel as though love is going your way, then, you know, step into it. I wouldn't say that he's definitely your person, but it looks as though the two of you could have a wonderful summer. It'll be up to you, but he does look like he is back to work on the relationship in a much more mature way. So free will is going to be the answer to that question. I don't think you're sold either way on the idea. As you've said, you don't know for sure. Let him, you know, base it on how you feel when he does, you know, he matures and shows that he has what it takes to be mature in love. All right, so let's see here what we have. 
Oh, I mean, it's so vibrant. Ah, I had somebody tell me, well, it's a long story. Never mind. <laughs> Let's see, Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa. Okay. Okay, so should you walk away from a relationship with a Capricorn? All oh, right. Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> she, Vanessa says that my voice relaxes her. <laughs> so that's so nice. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I really have this strong belief that tarot readings um, need to be very more therapeutic. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the you know, very dramatic tarot readings. Our hearts are in this. We don't come to a tarot reading with a light heart. We come because we have a tender heart. And I think it's really important to honor the people who are here watching, the people that I read for, to be very sensitive to the place that they're in because I've had heartbreak like everybody else. And it is, you know, when you turn to a tarot reading, you're really looking for guidance and you're looking for gentleness and you're looking for healing. So I think it's very important to be gentle with everybody. So let's see if your Capricorn is the right person. I can't make this stuff up. Capricorn's the first card out of the deck. The Capricorn Queen. So that is known as a mommy card. The cat, the um, the Queen or the King of Pentacles is a daddy card. And that's Tor oh, Taurus. Oh wow. Okay. What's the significance of this? <laughs> Things are not stable, is what I would say from that jump of cards. So what I'm getting here for you, there's a lot, a lot of cards here. Okay, so I'm, you know me, I always pull the cards because I think Spirit has a message for us when we're looking at this. So I'm going to pull, oh, there's a whole floor full of cards. So I'm going to do the overall energy here. So I'm going to look at all these cards. Can you see them on the table? I'm, I, this is a few more than three. <laughs> it's okay, though. I'm going to get a quick take. I'm going to take like a snapshot of the relationship and just tell you my vibe with this, if he's the right person for you or not. Capricorn energy also with the Devil card. Five of Swords energy is being unfair. The Death card uh, looks like you, it looks as though you've been in situations of heartbreak with this person. Let's see what we have. This person's a lightweight for you. The, the energy that I'm getting is that I feel, and I don't like saying this, I feel as though you're going to hold out for something better. I'm getting that you have most likely somebody coming in with Leo energy, very vibrant, very happy, somebody who really doesn't play games, somebody who will sweep you off your feet, who will be a person of action. When we look at the King of Wands energy, what I'm seeing for you is someone who knows just what to do, they know when to do it, they know how to do it, and they have they really have a very pure, you know, sense of pride and dedication to a relationship. I love the Leo energy for you. With the Death card, with the Devil card, with the Three of Swords, the King of Swords, I feel like your person loves you a lot. I mean, they really see you as this incredible person. They really do. But it looks like they cause a lot of grief and a lot of strife and a lot of drama. So I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I would like to be wrong. Um, but it look, that's what's popping up here in the energy. I think when things are good, they are out of sight. And I think that's where your dilemma is. I think that when you're with this person and things are going well, you've never been happier, you've never felt better. It is Leo energy. This person really is a good lover for you. You know, when they're really not in this devil or controlling energy, they're amazing. So what I see, though, is the question for you is going to come down to, can we live day to day and have serenity and beauty and peacefulness instead of third-party situations or flirting or ego-driven energy where this person always has to be in control? You know, you've heard the saying, um, not my circus, not my monkeys. Well, I feel like this person, and you can tell me, please feel free, this person has a lot of drama, and I feel as though when they decide that they want to exercise 
some of that energy. I feel like, I think that you feel like you get in the middle of this very negative situation when what you're seeking is happiness. But it's like there's two sides to the coin. It's almost like this is a, this is a day, this is a happy, and this is what tears tears at the relationship is a person who's pretty ego driven who it's like my way or the highway well I'm always working so we can't go out when you want to go out so I hope I'm wrong I want to be wrong I feel as though this person may not be your forever person um, and I feel it's because they they're sort of night and day you know that it's pretty big big swings and behavior so, all right, so let's see, let's see, Vanessa, oh, let's see here, Julia, would love to know if Mr. France is thinking and feeling and why you can't tell me. <laughs> I told you I thought about you when I did a couple of the Leo readings. I really felt that, um, that he was coming back, so very interesting. So let's see his thoughts, feelings, and intentions with you, Julia. Thoughts, feelings, and intentions. He has plans for the future right there. That is your ship has arrived in the harbor. He's coming back. Now, tiki torches, you know, and uh, days at the beach and a lot of passion here. So your person is, you know, he's feeling it. So let's see. Oh, look at this. He's going to visit really quickly. He is coming in to see you far sooner than you think he's coming to visit. So let's see, Mr. France. <laughs> he does hold back. Oh, my goodness. That's Capricorn energy. Okay, so we're going to clarify it. So let's see. Yep, and here we go. Capricorn energy again. So let's go ahead and clarify because it looks as though in his heart space, he's holding back. Let's see. Why is he holding back? Let's see here. Oh, he's afraid. Oh, look at this. He is afraid. He has remorse and regret about what happened when he moved away. So it shows that at the end of the day, he thinks that he has to prove himself to you. Nice. Okay, here's the good news. Julia, the king of pentacles, is very affectionate. So the affection is on its way. This is not the Scorpio king. This is the energy of the Taurus King. So it shows us that even though he's been holding back, once everything is stabilized, once the two of you are together, he may even live with you in the near future, or he may invite you to live with him, depending on the circumstances. Look at this. He sees you as his queen. He absolutely sees you as his queen. We have the queen of uh the, the Capricorn Queen twice. Queen of Pentacles is twice. So when I get Capricorn energy, this is forever energy, okay? Capricorn energy is Saturn. It'll take you into old age. 